We're growing faster, we're growing at better value, uh, we're growing with better fundamentals, and we have competitive advantages that a lot of the industry wishes that they had. Joining us for a conversation is Kyle Floyd, the CEO and chairman of Vox Royalty. Mr. Floyd, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks, Maurice. It's a pleasure to be with you today. <laughs> Glad to have you join us today as we deep dive into the value proposition of Vox Royalty, which offers a smart way to invest in commodities. Before we begin, Mr. Floyd, please introduce us to Vox Royalty and the opportunity the company presents to shareholders. Absolutely. Vox Royalty Corp has been around since 2014. Our business model focuses on buying third-party royalties, which we believe is the most value-enhancing way to play the commodity sector. And so we have built what is the fastest-growing royalty company on the planet. We also believe one of the royalty companies trading at the most attractive valuations. And we have a management team and business entirely engaged in finding deep value by buying these third-party royalties all around the world. And we've been very, very successful in building that business for our investors over the last eight years. Now, before we take a step forward, let's take a step back. What are some of the merits of royalty companies for shareholders? Well, royalty companies uh, offer a better risk adjusted way to play commodity exposure. And there's a couple key reasons for that. Royalties typically are revenue interests uh, that sit uh, essentially that run with the mining assets. And so you take a top line percentage interest in these projects, you're not exposed to a lot of the costs and the risks that these mining companies face, which can be quite significant. So if there's a cost overrun, the royalty company gets to continue to, to generate its revenue from the project without having to fund any of the project or being diluted um, if, that, if that underlying entity needs to raise capital. The other costs that the mining that the royalty companies are not associated with that the mining companies face are the general input costs, the variable cost structure, whether it's for fuel, people, uh, you name it. Uh, all the inputs that go into mining companies, all those costs are increasing, and royalty companies aren't exposed to that. The other benefit, then, on the upside is there's a lot of diversification you get from royalty companies. A company like Vox that has five production stage assets going to 10 production stage assets and beyond means that we're diversified across a suite of assets. And so we don't have single asset risk that you have in a lot of mining companies. So a lot less risk, but a lot of the same upside, if not better upside, that you realize in, in mining companies in the form of metal prices going up helps increase the value of royalty companies, increase in production, increases in reserves, increase in resources. All of that goes to fuel royalty company growth. And we're not on the hook for any of those costs in terms of building out those assets further. So that's a, that's a, a quick synopsis on why um, we're so bullish on royalties. And, uh, and we believe that's backed up uh, in the market as royalty companies have outperformed for the better part of the last two decades. Yes, that's one of the virtues of royalty companies, a number of embedded optionality. And speaking of royalties, to truly appreciate the value proposition of Vox Royalty, Mr. Floyd, what is a royalty juxtaposed to a stream? We hear those terms often, but they get commingled, but they're not the same. It's a great question. Royalties are these third party interests. So interests not held by the operating party or the mining company. They're the prospector or the junior mining company or the family that owned a ranch that sold the asset eventually to the mining company and typically retained a royalty, which was that right in the upside of revenue generated for these mines, typically for the life of those, those mines. A stream is actually a structure where you're typically financing a mining company. And the counterparty is the mining company. You're giving them capital and in return, you are taking a percentage of a certain metal that's generated from that opportunity. Uh, and you're continuing to remit payments to get that metal over the life or over the term of that commercial arrangement. So the big difference is typically on streams, you're, you're actually giving money to a mining company, so you need them to need capital uh, versus our royalty model, we're not giving money, money to the mining company. We're ex we are purchasing a right held by a third party. Um, and typically those are non-core assets for these groups. So we're not restricted by mining companies needing capital uh, to find really, really interesting deals for our investors. Now that we have a better understanding on the merits of royalty companies, Mr. Floyd, what differentiates Vox Royalty? There's a few things that differentiate us, and we built a business model to be differentiated, to offer better risk-adjusted exposure for our investors. And one of the key differentiators is we focus exclusively on buying third-party royalties. So we don't compete at the big end of town trying to finance multi-billion dollar projects with streams. What we do is we find third-party royalties all over the globe. So we have a database 
that has 8,000 proprietary royalties in it. It gives us a roadmap for finding great royalties in jurisdictions that range from West Africa to Australia to North America to South America. And we use a technical team uh, made up of mining engineers and geologists that help screen for really good projects that have these amazing royalties over them. Uh, and then we connect with these owners of these projects with our deal sourcing agents all around the world to actually be able to transact on these opportunities. So we've built this ecosystem, this business model around finding third party royalties where we think the best value is generated. And if you look at the historical returns of the Francos and the Royals, that's where they've generated the best returns, buying these third party royalties, much less the streams um, and the financing of mining companies that has been completed over the last decade. That being said, they perform very, very well overall. And so that is our business model. Third party royalties, finding amazing assets with great royalties over them all around the world. And those three kind of key pillars of that stool, a deal sourcing uh, agent uh, network that I think goes farther than probably anybody in our range, a technical team and intellectual property in the form of a database and, and all those combined to make us what has been the fastest growing royalty company. And I believe also the best value over the last three years. Speaking of database, Vox Royalty owns one of the world's largest proprietary royalty databases consisting over 8,000. <laughs> That's amazing. 8,000 royalties, most of which are located in Australia, Canada, and the USA. Mr. Floyd, please introduce us to Vox Royalty's property bank. It's a very exciting asset for us, and it's a huge competitive advantage. And so this database has been built over the better part of the last 10 years. Vox was building our own database and building our own intellectual property. But one of the things that we were acutely aware of is there was the potential that someone was farther ahead of us in terms of this effort to build out proprietary advantages in finding third party royalties. And sure enough, there was a company that was farther ahead, and that was a company called Mineral Royalties Online. So they had at that time it was a database of 7,000 third party royalties uh, in their database all around the world. They had built this database uh, bottoms up through first principles and first party data. So they went into different mining ministries and cadastras and exploration offices all around the world and made deals to essentially get this hard copy data and then translate that into uh, data that was online. And so we purchased that database in 2019 that has underpinned a lot of our success uh, and our growth rate. And so that database gives us an edge all around the globe in terms of finding these third party royalties um, and being able to transact and close those and bring those into the portfolio. I see that Vox has undertaken a keen interest in Australia. Why Australia? Well, there's not just one reason for Australia. There's a lot of reasons uh, for us in Australia. Australia is, and we're slightly biased, but it's also backed up by a lot of the third party rating agencies, is one of the best, if not the best mining jurisdiction on the planet. According to the Fraser Institute, Western Australia, which is home to most of our royalties, is the best mining jurisdiction. So people um, obviously understand the value in Nevada royalties because Australia is actually a better mining jurisdiction, in our opinion. Uh, we believe Australia is the place that you want to have uh, significant exposure to. So complemented by our IP, which has a very strong basis in Australian royalties and a technical team, uh, three of our four key business development executives are also Australian citizens. We understand what we believe is the best major mining market as well as anybody, if not better than anybody else. We've accumulated what is now the second largest holding of hard rock mining royalties in Australia. And that's really significant because Australia, beyond just being a fundamentally great jurisdiction with great gold endowments, it has had really a very buoyant gold price in Aussie dollar terms. It's been trading at almost all time high prices in Aussie dollars for the last almost four years. And so what's happened is a lot of the exploration development projects that we forecasted would do well have exceeded expectations because the buoyant equity markets have allowed these companies to raise as much capital as needed to advance these projects. And so it's been a huge boon to our business um, in terms of the growth of assets already in the portfolio, them growing ahead of expectations and really realizing tremendous value for our investors. And so us picking Australia as a place to focus on has really paid off for our shareholders. Sounds quite intriguing. Now within the property bank, Vox Royalty has producing assets and a pipeline of growth assets. Sir, please acquaint us with your top three key producing assets beginning in Australia. So one of the ones we're really excited about is uh, Janet Ivey. So we just acquired this royalty um, this year and we were engaged on it prior to it going back into production. It's now in production. 
but it has an absolutely uh, huge expansion uh, plan ahead of it. So that expansion plan we expect to take place late next year, uh, and that'll make it a very, very significant cash flow for cash flow or for us. Um, we also have the Kulinovic iron ore royalty. So we bought that royalty from a telecom business, if you can believe it. It was held in in you know one of their subsidiaries for a very long time, uh, and we're engaged on it pre it going into production. That's had a huge run and huge growth, obviously, with the iron ore run up in prices. Um, and then we also have you know a host of of other royalties that are in production, uh, Corora Resources, Higginsville Operations. Uh, we have a, we have three open pits that feed that mill, and so that's been running at, at record pace for us. And then one that we're really excited about is the Segula Oil Project that uh, we bought pre-production. It is the highest grade open pit gold project in West Africa, and they just announced first gold pour. So we expect to see revenue from that asset in Q4. So really, a tremendous amount of growth in our portfolio from producing and production stage assets. We've covered the key producing assets. Sir, please introduce us to the growth assets of your property bank. Well, Maurice, I could go on for days about our growth <laughs> assets. I've got, to, I've got to work really hard to kind of narrow it down uh, for, uh, for the viewers. Um, a couple, of the, I'll name a couple that I'm really excited about. So Ashburton is one. And when we bought that royalty, uh, this Ashburton project was in the portfolio of Northern Star. And it was, it was a little bit sleepy, but we saw a huge potential in the asset. And what we believed would eventually happen was that either Northern Star would start really upping the development curve on this uh, and the timeline on it, or it would transact to a more nimble junior. And sure enough, that happened just a few months after acquisition of this royalty. So it's a 1.65 million ounce gold resource in Western Australia. Uh, it's owned by Kalamazoo Resources now. They've got 12,000 meters of drilling going on. And their target is three plus million ounces for this asset. So that's a, a really exciting NSR royalty for us. Um, the other one that I'm really excited about is the Bowdens Project. The Bowdens Project is the largest developing primary silver project in all of Australia. Uh, it's got a it's got great fundamentals. It is an open pit that's now exploring um, the very strong potential to go underground either after the open pit is exhausted or contemporaneous with open pit mining. And you know that is a royalty that has um, very, very multi-decade mine life potential. So those are a couple of the key development stage assets that we're really excited about. We also have a host of royalties um, that are gonna be coming into production in the very near term. Pitombieras is a ferrovanadium project in Brazil uh, that they are expecting to come into production in the first half of next year. The Bulong Gold Project uh, is a development stage, production stage asset that's expected to go into production in mid next year over a Western, Western Australia gold project. Uh, and then there's many more that we can get into without uh, you know, belaboring the point that we have a tremendous amount of growth assets. We have 20 plus development stage assets, many of which are, are being aggressively moved forward. So it's a, it's a fantastic portfolio of assets with real growth in front of it um, that's, that's being delivered to the market really every quarter, um, and that's increasing value for shareholders. Realizing this is a forward-looking statement, uh, we're going to get into some numbers later in this, this discussion, but how much revenue potential is before us under the current market conditions if we combine the producing and the growth assets? Yeah, and it's it's very much a forward-looking statement, so I would I would caution on that. Look, we've, we've done a fantastic job of finding royalties three to 24 months out, uh, prior to production, where we find really good value. We're able to, to bring in those assets. They're good fits within our portfolio. We take away the risk from you know the disparate holders of these third-party royalties all around the world that this is a non-core asset. So it uh, you know there's there's risk asymmetry. They fit better in our portfolio. They don't fit as one-off assets. And so we're able to find really good value all around the world finding these near production assets. We came out and, and I think we've really validated that business over the last 12, 18 months. We recently doubled revenue guidance. Uh, we'll probably talk about that more, uh, but that's really on the basis that we're finding these royalties pre-production and then allowing them the time, and usually it's not very long time, to go to get into production. And so when we step out and look at our portfolio, you know, I, I believe that there's 15 to $20 million of long life revenue potential in the portfolio as it stands. There's reason for tremendous upside on that number as well, in that there's 15, 20 exploration stage assets, some that are generating bonanza grade drill hits um, that are increasing the possibility that those are gonna become mines. So very active exploration projects that would kind of fuel growth on top of that. 
But uh, I believe it's one of the most undervalued relative portfolios out there. It has very strong potential to generate that type of cash flow over the medium and long term. Um, but again, I caution that it is a forward looking statement. Um, those, those are numbers based on operator guidance. They're based on the technical engineering studies that, uh, that coincide with these assets. Um, but you know, we, we feel very good about the revenue generating capability of this portfolio. Now, Jermaine, to revenue, how do mergers and acquisitions impact your portfolio? So we, we have a very, very disciplined approach to acquisitions. Um, we have not, to the best of our knowledge, won a single royalty in a sales process. Most royalty companies, in fact, almost all royalty companies have been growing their business by winning sales processes. So that's royalties that are being shot by investment banks and they're paying absolutely top dollar uh, pretty much in every, in every scenario to bring those royalties in the portfolio. What we do is we've built a business around finding these third party royalties and desperate, or, sorry, disparate shareholders um, all around the world where these are non-core assets. Uh, and so we've been able to transact at really, really good value. We're very disciplined on, on what good value looks like. It has to be accretive across kind of three different key metrics, um, absolute return on investment basis, uh, relative net asset value and relative cash flow multiples. Most royalty companies cannot stack up to what Vox is accomplishing in terms of the acquisitions that it's bringing in across those three metrics. Um, usually one, if not two, uh, if not all three of those metrics break down when other royalty royalty companies are purchasing third party royalties like we are. Now, before we leave the property bank, multi-layered question. What is the next unanswered question for Vox Royalty? When can we expect a response and what will determine success? Well, the, the, the next step for Vox is we continue to invest in our royalty database. Uh, we will continue to build on that competitive advantage. It's fueled a lot of our growth. It's given us a, a huge leg up on the competition. Um, so we continue to invest um, in, uh, in that asset for us. Um, we continue to expand our relationships around the globe. We, we are finding interesting royalties from Australia to South America to West Africa and everywhere pretty much in between um, that we want to have exposure. And so, you know, from Vox and what you'll continue to see on us is expanding on those competitive advantages, expanding on the capability to find really good value for our investors on really exciting projects where our mining engineers and our geologists really understand the quality of those assets so that your viewers and the generalist audience out there does not have to do that work. Um, and I think that's a big advantage that we present for investors um, is this this competitive advantage that, that's really good at finding good value. Leaving the property bank, let's discuss the people responsible for increasing shareholder value. Mr. Floyd, please introduce us to your management team. I'm really excited about our management team. We've handpicked and recruited the management team that we have to fill the roles that we believe needed to be filled over the years to really create shareholder value. And so I founded the concept back in 2013, 2014, and with the belief that we needed to have competitive advantages and skill sets that, that increase shareholder value and had the capability to do so. And so a few of our key management team members, Spencer Cole is our chief investment officer, previously worked at South 32 and BHP. And at BHP is where the, the, uh, the mineral royalties online business, the inspiration was found. And so Spencer Cole and Rian Easter, who's in, who's one of our executive vice president out of Australia, uh, Spencer's a mining engineer, Rian's a geologist. Rian's led some of the most interesting grassroots exploration campaigns for the who's who of majors. Um, they went about building mineral royalties online. So they built that business. They came into Vox when we acquired that business. Um, and that's been a huge part of our success. Simon Cooper has been with us for a very long time. Simon's both a mining engineer, a geologist, entrepreneurial, and brings a significant amount of technical capability. He's worked on some of those interesting projects all around the world, but also a very good skill set in terms of finding acquisitions and bringing those acquisitions into our portfolio. And then we have a great CFO in Pascal Attard and a great general counsel in Adrian Cochran. So we believe that we've um, built one of the most exciting and capable management teams uh, in the small cap royalty space. And it's a huge asset for our business and for our investors. And here's an opportunity to uh, brag on yourself. Who is Kyle Floyd and what makes him qualified for the task at hand? Yeah, it's always uh, it's always hard to talk about yourself. It's, um, it's <laughs> talking about others. But just a little bit about my background. So I ran the mining investment banking division for a firm called Roth Capital. And the inspiration to build Vox was around 
helping mining companies raise capital, but then seeing that capital really not get deployed in the right means and the right ways. And at the end of the day, not generating great risk adjusted results for investors. And so I'd advise multiple companies on selling streams and royalties and acquiring streams and royalties. And I believe that was the best business model for the generalist investor to get exposure to commodities. And so when about building a business model for investors, by investors, we started with a seven and a half million dollar investment and began building this company around generating better risk adjusted returns in the commodity sector. Uh, and we've been very successful at doing so. And so that's that's a little bit of my background. I uh, graduated in finance from the University of Washington, then a stint at Colorado School of Mines in the Mineral and Energy Economics Department. But uh, really a, a business built uh, around achieving great risk adjusted returns for investors. And is that uh, your hockey jersey in the background there? It is. Uh, it is indeed. It is my hockey jersey in the background. <laughs> All right. Switching gears, let's look at some numbers. Mr. Floyd, please provide the capital structure for Vox Royalty. So we have 39 million shares outstanding, very tight share structure. We actually, when we went public in May of last year, we actually had to forward split the stock, which I would tell you is an anomaly in the in the resource sector. We have 5 million warrants outstanding. Uh, essentially, almost all of them are uh, at this stage, they they strike at 450, which is uh, out of the money as we, as we speak today, uh, and no debt and a very, very strong working capital position. So we're very well financed. Uh, we have a tight capital structure. We have no intentions of going back to the equity markets anytime soon. Uh, and we will continue to be able to build our asset portfolio, a combination of debt and strategic acquisitions um, and, and minimize dilution in doing so. So um, excited about where our capital structure is today for investors. I think it's a, it's a very unique opportunity from that perspective. Who are some of the major shareholders? Major shareholders, um, you know, we've uh, we've done a pretty good job of cultivating a nice institutional shareholder base. Uh, management owns 15 percent. Uh, the founding investors own a, another 15 to, to 30 percent. And then we've got a nice institutional shareholder roster made up of Gold 2000 slash Conway, U.S. Global, Adrian Day, your Pacific Gold Fund uh, and many others that uh, that have taken positions uh, in us over the last year and a half. In closing, Mr. Floyd, for current and prospective shareholders, why Vox and why now? Vox, I believe, is a, is a tremendous opportunity uh, emboldened by the fact that we are trading at the, the very low end of the relative valuation um, spectrum versus our peers. If you look at some of our closest comps, I'll refrain from naming them, but they're trading at multiples of our relative valuation, yet we're growing faster, we're growing at better value, uh, we're growing with better fundamentals, and we have competitive advantages that a lot of the industry wishes that they had. Um, and so I believe we're a tremendous growth opportunity. There's a lot lower risk given our lower relative multiple. So the risk to return upside, I think, is there. Uh, we're very optimistic about what we're going to be achieving for investors over the immediate future and over the long term. Um, you have a management team that's committed to the success of this business, owning 15 percent combined. Um, so we look at this uh, as solely an opportunity to create long term shareholder wealth. And I think our business model is achieving that for our shareholders every day. Last question. What did I forget to ask? You know, Maurice, uh, I think you did a pretty good job. I think we covered just about everything. And, and it's really about finding the best risk adjusted way to play commodities. That's why we're here. I believe we're offering that for investors. Uh, we've continued to demonstrate that with our, our recent quarterly results. And investors can expect more of that as we continue to progress and build this business. And what I believe is realize a re-rating for our shareholders. And even if we don't, we're going to continue realizing a creative value for our shareholders that should also be reflected in the share price and our share value at the end of the day. Mr. Floyd, for someone that wants to learn more about Vox Royalty, please share the contact details. Absolutely. VoxRoyalty.com. Uh, we're on all the social media channels as well. Very happy to engage. There's also IR at VoxRoyalty.com. Please absolutely feel free to be in touch. We love engaging with, uh, with our investors and we'll be happy to share more information. Mr. Floyd, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. Wishing you and Vox Royalty the absolute best, sir. Thanks, Maurice. It's been a pleasure. 
The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.